Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Teresa Smith, known affectionately to her legion of followers as Queensy Lock the Voice on TikTok, passed away at the age of 48 after a valiant struggle against cancer. Smith's death occurred at her home in Stockton, California on Wednesday, surrounded by her family and loved ones. Her battle with ovarian cancer, which had aggressively spread to her lungs, marked the final chapter of her life. Her daughter, Yolundria Rooks, shared that Teresa only disclosed her cancer diagnosis to her family in November 2023, when her condition had worsened significantly, leading to hospitalization. Teresa Smith rose to prominence on TikTok with her captivating covers, most notably her rendition of Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For? Her unique voice and vibrant persona, highlighted by her signature bright-colored hair and empowering catchphrase, Be Who You Are for Pride, resonated with many. Smith's creative expression on the platform not only entertained, but also inspired her audience to embrace their true selves. Following her passing, her family expressed a desire to have her remains transported to Macon, Georgia, for burial next to her son Josiah, a responsibility now falling on her eldest daughter, Yolundria. To support this, a GoFundMe campaign has been initiated to cover the funeral costs and support Teresa's surviving children, underscoring the family's call for community assistance during this challenging time. The loss of Teresa Smith, or Queen Z Lock the Voice, leaves a void in the TikTok community and among her family, who cherished her as a vibrant soul and a loving mother. Her legacy, marked by her artistic contributions, and the courage with which she faced life's final battle continues to inspire and resonate with those who knew her and those touched by her digital presence. Kasha Rigby, a trailblazing American telemark skier renowned for her adventurous spirit and significant contributions to the skiing world, tragically passed away at the age of 54 after being caught in a small avalanche in Brezovica, Kosovo. The devastating incident occurred while Rigby was embarking on a skiing venture with her fiancé, Magnus Wolf Murray. Despite Wolf Murray's immediate efforts to rescue her, Rigby was reportedly killed on impact. This loss has deeply affected the skiing community, with tributes flooding her social media from admirers and fellow athletes globally. Before her untimely demise, Rigby shared a poignant final post on Instagram reflecting on the challenging weather conditions she faced during her ski pursuits. Her words painted a vivid picture of the relentless spirit of skiers, undeterred by the harsh elements. Rigby's passion for skiing was not just a personal pursuit, but a shared journey with her fiancé. As they navigated the fringes of known resorts in search of winter's essence through their project, the tour de piste. Rigby's legacy in the skiing world is monumental dubbed the best telemark skier in the known universe. By Outside Magazine in the 1990s, her career was marked by pioneering achievements, including being the first to telemark ski on Cho Yu, the world's sixth highest mountain. Her ventures took her from the peaks of Russia, Ecuador, and Lebanon, showcasing her exceptional skill and fearless approach to skiing. Beyond her sporting achievements, Rigby's appearance on National Geographic's Ultimate Survival Alaska highlighted her versatile talents and adventurous spirit. Her life was a testament to the joy of exploring the unknown, and her passing leaves a void in the hearts of those who knew her and the broader skiing community. As the world mourns the loss of Kasha Rigby, her legacy endures through the memories of her incredible feats and the inspiration she provided to many. Tributes from figures like American mountaineer Jimmy Chin underscore the profound impact Rigby had on those around her, celebrating her life as a beacon of joy, wisdom, and unparalleled courage. Amanda Davies, beloved daughter of esteemed One Life to Live actress Erica Slezak, 
has passed away at the young age of 42. The news of Davy's untimely demise was shared on Slezak's fan page, leaving fans and the acting community in mourning. While details surrounding her death remain undisclosed, the loss of such a vibrant life has undoubtedly left a profound impact on her family, friends, and admirers. Born into a lineage of distinguished performers, Amanda Davies carved her own niche in the acting world, albeit briefly, by portraying the younger version of her mother's iconic character, Vicky, in flashback scenes on ABC's One Life to Live in 2003. This unique collaboration between mother and daughter on screen highlighted a touching moment in the soap opera's history, bridging generations of talent and legacy. Erica Slezak, Amanda's mother, is a venerable figure in television history, having portrayed Victoria Lord on One Life to Live from 1971 until the show's conclusion in 2013. Her portrayal earned her a legion of fans and critical acclaim, including multiple Emmy Awards. Erica's father and Amanda's grandfather, Walter Slezak, was a Tony Award-winning actor with a prestigious career in both film and television including a memorable role in Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. His appearance on One Life to Live, much like Amanda's, served to intertwine the family's acting heritage with the fabric of the show. The loss of Amanda Davies is a poignant reminder of the fleeting nature of life. Her passing reverberates through the hearts of those who knew her personally and the fans who admired the Slezak family's contributions to the arts. As the acting community and her loved ones mourn, Amanda's memory will undoubtedly live on, cherished for the joy and artistry she represented. Mark Gustafson, an esteemed American animator and film director renowned for his co-direction of Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, passed away from a heart attack at the age of 63. His remarkable career, marked by a passion for stop-motion animation, left an indelible mark on the animation industry earning him critical acclaim and a legion of admirers. Gustafson's journey in the world of animation began in the 1980s at Will Vinton Studios, where he honed his craft on projects such as a claymation Christmas celebration, Meet the Raisins, and the PJs. His talent for bringing inanimate objects to life through meticulous animation was evident early on, paving the way for a career filled with creativity and innovation. One of Gustafson's most notable contributions was as the animation director of Fantastic Mr. Fox, where his expertise in stop-motion animation was instrumental in bringing the characters and the world of the film to vivid life. However, it was his collaboration with Guillermo del Toro on Pinocchio that would bring him his greatest acclaim. The film, a dark and visually stunning retelling of the classic tale, won Best Animated Feature at the 95th Academy Awards, a testament to Gustafson's skill, vision, and dedication to his craft. Throughout his career, Gustafson's work was characterized by a unique blend of artistic expression and technical prowess. His ability to convey deep emotions and complex narratives through the medium of animation made his films not just entertaining, but also profound artistic achievements. Gustafson's legacy is one of creativity, innovation, and excellence in animation. His contributions to the field have inspired countless animators and filmmakers, and his work will continue to enchant audiences for generations to come. As the animation community mourns the loss of one of its brightest stars, Mark Gustafson's spirit and creations will live on, a lasting tribute to a remarkable career. Charles Osgood, the venerable newsman known for his decades-long tenure at CBS, including as the beloved host of CBS Sunday Morning, passed away at the age of 91 at his home in New Jersey. His death was attributed to dementia, as confirmed by his family. With a career that spanned over 45 years at CBS News, Osgood's departure marks the end of an era for American journalism. Osgood's unique blend of news writing, poetry, and music made him a distinctive voice on the airwaves. He took over the helm of CBS Sunday Morning in 1994, and under his stewardship, the program achieved its highest ratings in three decades, 
winning three Daytime Emmys for Outstanding Morning Program. His retirement in 2016 was not just the conclusion of a job, but the end of a joyful chapter in his life, as he described the immense pleasure he found in introducing stories and working alongside talented storytellers and producers. Beyond his role as a news anchor, Osgood was celebrated for his lyrical prowess and musical talents, often weaving poetry into his broadcasts and serenading audiences with Christmas carols on the piano during holiday specials. His predecessor, Charles Curalt, hailed him as one of the last great broadcast writers, a sentiment echoed by colleagues and viewers alike. Osgood's legacy is not merely confined to his journalistic achievements. It extends to his mentorship and the profound impact he had on those who worked with him. Jane Pauley, who succeeded him as the host of Sunday Morning, reflected on the masterclass in communication that was Osgood's career, emphasizing his unique style that resonated so deeply with audiences. His contribution to the field of journalism was recognized with numerous awards, including the Walter Cronkite Excellence in Journalism Award and a Lifetime Achievement Emmy in 2017. Osgood's voice, style, and warmth have left an indelible mark on broadcast journalism, making him a figure whose absence will be profoundly felt by colleagues, viewers, and listeners alike. As tributes pour in, it's clear that Charles Osgood's influence on the world of news and beyond will be remembered for generations to come. His signature sign-off, I'll See You on the Radio, will remain a fond reminder of a broadcaster who was truly one of a kind. CBS News plans to honor Osgood with a special broadcast, ensuring that his legacy continues to inspire and inform future journalists. Carl Weathers, a versatile talent whose career spanned from the gridiron of professional football to the silver screen's most memorable roles, passed away at the age of 76. Weathers' journey from an undrafted NFL player to an iconic actor showcased his relentless pursuit of excellence across diverse fields. Before his acting career catapulted him to fame, Weathers was a formidable athlete. Playing college football for the San Diego State Aztecs, he demonstrated exceptional skill on the field, a testament to his dedication and athletic prowess. Despite not being drafted in the 1970 NFL Draft, Weathers' determination saw him joining the Oakland Raiders, followed by a stint with the BC Lions in the Canadian Football League. However, it was his transition to acting that unveiled his true calling. Weathers' acting career was marked by iconic roles that have left an indelible mark on Hollywood. As Apollo Creed in the Rocky series, he brought to life a character that was not only a formidable boxer, but also a symbol of resilience and courage. His portrayal earned him a place in the hearts of fans worldwide, making Apollo Creed a beloved figure in sports cinema. In addition to Rocky, Weathers' role in Predator as Colonel Al Dillon further cemented his status as a versatile actor capable of delivering powerful performances in both drama and action genres. Beyond his most famous roles, Weathers' talent extended to comedy and voice acting, showcasing his ability to connect with audiences across various mediums. His appearances in Happy Gilmore, Arrested Development, and as a voice actor in the Toy Story franchise displayed his range and adaptability as an actor. Moreover, his role in The Mandalorian as Grief Karga introduced him to a new generation of fans, proving that his legacy in the entertainment industry continues to grow. Weathers' impact extends beyond his roles. He was a trailblazer for African-American actors in Hollywood, paving the way for future generations. His transition from athlete to actor is a story of perseverance and adaptability, highlighting the importance of pursuing one's passion regardless of the challenges faced. In remembering Carl Weathers, we celebrate a man whose life was a testament to the power of following one's dreams. From the football field to the film set, Weathers demonstrated that with talent, determination, and hard work, one can leave a lasting legacy. His contributions to both sports and entertainment will be remembered for generations to come, and his spirit will continue to inspire those who dare to dream big. Peter Crombie, an acclaimed American film and television actor, 
passed away at the age of following a brief illness. Born on June 26, 1952, in the suburbs of Chicago, Crombie embarked on his acting journey after studying at the Yale School of Drama and subsequently moving to New York City. His career spanned several decades, during which he left an indelible mark on both the big screen and television. Crombie's filmography includes memorable roles in iconic films such as Born on the Fourth of July, Natural Born Killers, Seven, My Dog Skip, and The Doors. However, he is perhaps best remembered for his portrayal of the enigmatic, crazy Joe Davola on the hit sitcom Seinfeld, a role that showcased his exceptional range and comedic timing. His performance in Seinfeld not only earned him widespread acclaim, but also cemented his place in television history. Beyond Seinfeld, Crombie's versatility as an actor was evident through his guest appearances on various television series, including Spencer for Hire, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, Walker, Texas Ranger, Law and Order, Picket Fences, and NYPD Blue. Demonstrating his talent beyond acting, Crombie also ventured into writing, penning the script for the 2006 short drama, Threshold. Crombie's personal life saw him marrying Nadine Keijner in 1991, though the couple later divorced. Despite the ups and downs of his personal journey, Crombie's legacy as a talented and dedicated actor remains undisputed. His contributions to the entertainment industry have left a lasting impact, and he will be remembered fondly by fans and peers alike for his compelling performances and unique presence on screen.